Hey guys, coming here from rainy Pennsylvania this morning. So we got our shelter up to keep us nice and dry during this project. Today's project, we're going to make a survival bow. So stay tuned and we'll get started. Okay guys, so I cut down the sapling and what we're going to do next now is I'm going to cut this to length. So I'm going to make it around the same length as me and then if I need to shorten it throughout the process I can. So first thing I want to do is I want to look through this piece of wood and see if there's any large knots or anything that's going to be too difficult to work with. And I really don't see too many whatsoever but from this knot here, this was an actual small branch coming out, to the bend here, I'm going to take that section of wood to start with. And then I'm going to just keep working through the process and I'll put some footage on there. I'm actually going to split down this piece. Um, I'm making some wedges right now and we'll get some footage of that. We'll talk through how we're going to decide which side of this is going to be the belly of the bow. So I'm going to get started and we'll keep you, keep you going with it. So. I cut my bow stave to the length that I need it, and it's almost as tall as I am. So what I also did was got some sticks and I made a few wedges, and we're gonna use these wedges to split this down. Now when you're gonna split this down, what I've done in the past is you wanna look at the growth rings and you're gonna see if one side is tighter than the other, you wanna use the tighter side. But this is quite symmetrical on each side. I really, I'm not seeing a huge difference. So we're just gonna split this down the middle right now to start our bow. So how we're gonna do that is I took some logs and laid them out. And I'm gonna start by using my ax and cutting into this. And I'm gonna work my way down. When I have enough through that board, I'm actually gonna use one of these wedges and start to drive it in and then work it all the way down with the wedges. So I'm gonna just start working on this and I'll show you guys that process as we go. Okay, so you hear how that split and you can see, I'll give you a close up, that split out quite well. So what I wanna do now is this is a part you really want to take your time because you don't want to get off track with this. Tidy up this edge a little bit. Okay, so all you're going to do is you're going to put your wedge in and start to tap it in. And then get your next one. And start to work it in. Now I'm going to do that the, all, the whole way down. If for some reason, while I'm doing this process, I hit a knot, or I, the grain of the wood starts to go off, then of course I can always flip this over and start to work it to the other side, from the other side I mean, to keep it nice and straight down the middle of the wood. So I'm going to keep doing this process all the way down. And as you can see, it's starting to split out the way I want it. So 
So we'll just keep working this down. And if some of these wedges, all it is is just a small sapling green, we round it off the edge. And then the back side, we just put a V point on. So if it's not thin enough, it's no problem whatsoever. Just touch it up a little bit with your knife or your axe. And then just follow your line right down. So I'm starting to get into the main part of the tree, it's starting to get a little bit thicker. So I'm not getting enough penetration that I want with these wedges. So all I want to do is back up a little bit with the wedge and drive it in. And what that's going to do is open up this top end a little bit more and that's going to split down my bottom. So I have four wedges here. You shouldn't need much more than that to do this process. And as you can see, it's coming along quite well. Another wedge in here. And the beauty with this is if you get it done correctly, there's a possibility you can have two bow, bow staves out of one piece of wood. And there we go. We're right through. So, split the rest of that out. And we have our two staves. So I'm going to get the camera repositioned and we're going to start to work on one of these to cut it down and start to shape our bow with our axe. Okay so we have our staves now and we're going to initially we're going to shape it into a rough cut of our bow before we go any further. So if you can see the whole thing in the screen we have a little bit of twisting and turning on it so we're going to take care of all that with our axe right now. And we're not going to touch the bark on this yet. And the reason why is you want one growth, if you can keep the front um, of the bow, all one growth ring, it just adds strength and stability to that. So we're not going to touch the front until towards the end of the tailoring process. So I'm going to take my ax, I'm going to start to work to level this out, and I'm going to add some shape to this. So I'm going to carve these edges, I'm going to start to taper them in. And not too much, because we want to do a lot of this with our knife. Ultimately, if we had a rasp, that would work best, but we're going to do this all just with the tools that we would have out in the field for this survival bow. And um, I also want to mark, I'm going to take a piece of bank line, which I have here in my bag. And what I want to do is I want to measure the overall length of this stave. And then I want to take half of that and I want to mark the middle, just so I know where my handle is going to be. And that way I can take into consideration when I'm cutting my bow exactly where that's going to be. So measuring this up, I found my middle point and all I'm going to do is just put a small mark there and then once I get down off of this stump I can get a better mark in there. But now I know the center point so we'll get some footage. I'm going to start to shape this, show you how that looks. Once we get that done and the rough cut shape done, show you our next step.
Now one trick guys that you could do is you can take some charcoal out of the fire. And as you saw, I marked my middle line. You can actually mark where you want your bow to lay, just roughly. And then you know when you're working with it, you know what you have to cut. As you can see, I'm just darkening up where I can trim down for now. And then, as I go along through the process, of course, I can always take more off. But for now, I'm getting a good outline of how I want that bow to lay on both sides. Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm starting to get the shape of my bow now that I want it. Of course, it's extremely thick, so we're going to have to work on this. But for now, we're just working on getting the profile of the bow the way I would want it. Now, what I'm going to work on next is, as you can see, there's some a little bit of twist and turn to this wood. So, I'll work on leveling that out as best I can. And what I usually say to people to do is bounce back and forth between your axe and your knife at this stage because your axe is really going to give it a rough cut. But if you start to go with your knife in some sections that you need to, let's say, example, through here, you want to start to level out, you're going to get a lot smoother, cleaner cut with your knife than if you were using your axe. So I always say it's going to take a little bit more work doing it this way, but that's going to give you a nice, smooth, clean cut to see what you're working with. And then you can feel down your stave where you need to work with your knife and where you don't and then you can also reduce more with your axe. So this black section in here that's actually my handle so I started to work through that a little bit just to level all this out as I go and like I said I have a long way to go with this yet so I'm just going to keep reducing material and then once I get it a little bit more to the shape I want then I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to start taking some of this thickness out of it and I'm going to make sure you leave my handle that it's comfortable in my hand. So I'll keep at this and we'll show you some progress in a little bit. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you, I started working on taking the, the front bark off this bow. And like I said earlier, you want to stay within one growth ring while you do this. So this is a little tiresome, this project, this process, but it's you can do it. Okay, so you see this part of the bow, nice and smooth. This part, okay, we're gonna we're taking off the outer and inner bark. So how I normally do that is I'll take the tip of my knife and I just start to work it down the outside of that bark. And then I turn my knife up a little bit this way to loosen it up. Now you need to be careful during this process so you don't hurt yourself. But just work your knife a little bit. And you can see, it'll start to peel away. Okay? Now, in here it might look at initially as if you got down into the next growth ring. But actually you didn't. That's just some of the inner bark. So this is where, if you have a good 90 degree spine on your knife, or striking a ferroserium rod, it'll also work great for this. Because you can scrape the rest of that inner bark off. Let me actually clear this section here and once you have a piece of this started it's not too difficult to finish off that section and you just don't want to rush with this part okay so as you can see I'll just take it I'm getting just that inner bark cleared away And we're left with one growth ring. So you want to do that through your whole bow on the front of your bow and then pretty much leave that alone and then work the sides and the back. So I'm going to keep at this and then we'll get back to you shortly. Okay guys, so <clears throat> we got all the bark taken off at one growth ring on this part of the bow. Still have a lot of material reduction on the profile and the depth of it. So we're going to just keep working with that with our knife. At this point, you don't want to use an ax. And the reason for that is if you accidentally cut in too deep, you might ruin your entire bow. So you just want to keep working it. The only, 
Okay guys, so I continue to reduce material with my knife on my bow, and as you can see I got quite much reduced. I also started to cut a handle into my bow, just that way I can hold it and see how it's feeling in my hand. So we got it pretty thin, I'll show that a little bit up close in a second. But right now what I'm starting to do is just floor tiller the bow, which what that means is I have a rock here and I'm just starting to see if I'm getting any bend in the limbs. And I want to try to keep this as even as possible. So if I could see one side bending more than the other, then I want to reduce more material on that side. Okay, so we'll keep reducing material. Now one thing that you need to keep in mind with the material reduction, if you start getting too thin this way, from, front, from top to bottom, then you want to start to reduce side to side. You don't want to keep getting it too thin, you want to work it both ways. So I have it almost as thin as I think I can get it with my knife without making any mistakes to mess this up. So I'll probably start to take the profile of this and thin that out a little bit and just keep floor tillering it like that. And then um, we'll go from there. So I'll just get a quick close up of the bow itself. And like I said, you just need to work with the wood. See what the wood has to offer for you. This isn't something that has been dried out for days and days and months. Um, something that we gathered right off the land today so i'm going to keep at this we'll show a little bit more of my floor tillering as i go along and we'll go from there okay guys so i continue to reduce material both in the profile and the depth of this bow and as you can see here just by placing on a rock i'm starting to get some bend to this okay so what i want to do next is I'm going to cut my knocks into my bow. So normally what I do is I usually use a, about a thumb's length down from the top and I'll cut with my knife a groove on each side. And I normally towards the back of the bow, towards the handle, I want to angle my knock back this way so my bow string lays in there a little bit better. Now what we're going to initially do with this is we're going to use bank line. I'll show how to make a quick bow string out of bank line for this and then in a future video, we're gonna make a rawhide bowstring for this. But for now, we'll just use the bank line. So I'm gonna cut these knocks in, and I'm gonna reduce a little bit more material and continue to floor tiller. Okay guys, so I continued floor tillering and removing material from my bow, and I'm getting very good bend on each limb, real consistent throughout each limb. Now what I'm not going to do with this bow is I'm not gonna make a tillering stick. I'm just gonna to continue to floor tiller it until I could feel that I'm around the poundage of the bow I want. And I would like this bow to be between 50 and 60 pounds of draw weight. So I cut my knots into the bow, which I'll show you guys up close. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a bow string. So to make the bow string for this, I'm going to use some bank line. And what I'm going to do is take the length of the bow, plus about a foot, so I have a little extra. And then I'm gonna double that because I want a two-ply string. So, drop that down. And as you can tell, the rain, rain picked up quite much, so I threw on my rain gear here. Okay, so I have my bank line cut the length of my bow plus a foot, and it's doubled over. So what I want to do on one end is I want to tie a bowline knot. So I'm going to do that. And I don't need too big of a loop on the end. This is going to be stationary on one side of my bow. The other side of this bowline is where I'm actually going to make all my adjustments. So I tie my bowline knot in. I can slide that in. And I want to measure down to the other side and then I like to we're actually going to twist this rope but I normally go um, for my brace height a fist to a fist plus a thumb from somewhere in there now of course I might have to reduce some more, more material on this bow but for now I want to string this up see where we're at and see how my draw feels we might be quite close because I have been reducing a lot of material off of this and it feels like it's going to be right where it needs to be so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the tip of my bow about a fist length down 
and I'm gonna make sure that's the top of my next bowline knot. Now you can also use a trucker's hitch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can also use a timber hitch for this, um, so you don't have to keep tying this. But I know I'm going to be quite close with this, so we're just going to tie it off this time before we put any twists or bends or anything. Like that. Okay. So I have my other bowline knot, and as you can see, I'm around a fist, a little bit more, low on this. So what I want to do next now is get the top of this, and I want to start to just twist it around. Okay, now that of course is going to shorten the length of my bowstring. But that's not going to be a problem because remember we need to take into consideration we're going to have some flex in them limbs and we're going to need some brace height. We can't just have the string against the bow. So once I get it, and I just sort of eyeball this to where I need it, I like to hold tension on this side and release this side a little bit so this fits over. Just like that. I'm going to place my top string in, step through my bow, Give it some flex and seat it in the bottom. Knot. Make sure they're in. If they're not, just flex the bow a little bit more. Make sure they're seated. Okay, so as you can tell here, this limb is not as flexed as this. So that's where the killering process can come in a little bit more. I need a little bit more material reduction from this side. So I'm going to loosen this bowstring up, reduce a little bit more of the material, restring it, and then we should be pretty close. I need to make that string a little bit shorter, so I'm going to have to readjust that a few times, which I'm going to work on now. And then once I get this restrung, I'll show it to you guys, and we'll get out, take a couple shots with it, see how it's shooting. All right, guys. So I got my bow strung up to the brace height I want, which you can see I can put my fist through. So we're going to keep it like this for right now. We're going to take it out, give it a couple shots, Let's see how it shoots. You always want to work your limbs a little bit. That way if you need to tighten up your bowstring, you can. So let's get repositioned. We're going to go down in the lower field where we're at, set up a target and take a couple shots. Guys, so what we're going to use today is this is just an old arrow we had around camp that I was using, the field tip actually came off. So there's just a dull point on this. So I have a target position, probably about 15 yards away right now. Take a couple shots, see how the bow works. Alright guys, so that was my bow that I made. I was getting pretty good penetration with it. I'm going to work on a uh, rawhide string in the near future and work on some arrows, so I'll get that on video. Hope you enjoyed this. Until the next one, thanks guys.